Hi, I'm Luke. And I'm Karen. And together we're Make Daily. So today we're going to go through um, some of the techniques and tips we use for weathering and finishing our props. So a lot of the things we make are resin casts, um, or their replica props that are 3D printed. Mm -hmm. And once you've painted and finishing, there's something that can really ground your item in the real world, and that's weathering. So we really enjoy it. We do a lot with small scale items and some big scale ones, I suppose. Okay. So we're gonna go through some of those bits today. So, um, we do a lot of ours with uh, chalk powders. Uh -huh. So, you know, you can buy any cheap, you can buy pre-made weathering powders, or you can buy like a set of these, like you can on Amazon. And really, you know, we've used these for a year and a half, <laughs> and we're only just now starting to get to the finish of like the blacks and the browns and really they go a long long way so we're going to go a little bit through that today so some of the things you'll need are chalk powders you'll need some isopropyl alcohol um, we use a lot of this because i use it for the 3d printer but you can buy it in smaller bottles you certainly don't need 99.9 percent or 99.7 or whatever this is 99.9 99.9 yeah you don't need like say my name Walter White quality. You just need regular um, garden variety isopropyl. We just find it's easier for, for brushing around on the product. Um, you'll need some, some gloves um, because isopropyl will dry your skin out. You'll need a scalpel. You'll need some bits of sponge and you can use anything. You can use like... Kitchen sponge. Yeah, like we, we, you can buy some proper nice weathering sponges which are lost <laughs> um, but really mostly what we do is we take a normal sponge and we we tear small chunks out of it and that helps you get like a, a nice stipple texture and I don't know if I said already but you need a brush yes we need that to start the process off you, so also you, yeah go. just interrupting you yeah um we also use a little egg cup that's a cappuccino cup whatever <laughs> and also we use um these little mirrors uh, they're, they're really great for um, putting your chalk powder on, using them just as like a little paint palette. Obviously you could use anything, as long as it's not porous I guess, should be should be fine. So we've got the uh, the unfinished, which is just a raw, and that's just a raw cold cast, like that. Uh, do you want to grab the next one? Okay. So the next one we have is that one. Ha, ah, it's not glued. So this one's been polished up with steel wool, because it's cold cast. We'll talk about that in another video. So we just use steel wool to sort of rub it and, and clean it up. Then we've got this one. Yep, so Which this is first pass. Is properly weathered. The final one is that one. Da -da. Yeah, so we, we don't use um, just black because there's very rarely when you're weathering anything are things like actually pure black. So we're gonna we're gonna go and take one of these and we're gonna sort of weather it up and make it not clean. <laughs> make it pretty, yeah, by making yeah. it look dirty, dirty and, and old. <laughs> Especially, I mean, in the Star Wars universe, everything looks brilliant because it's dirty. I mean, you can see on here, there's like, you know, this is really clean. It's hard to see some of the details, but on parts like this, um, you know, it gets really gnarly and you can, it really makes all the details pop, which is what we enjoy to enjoy doing that. So we're going to weather up a few parts today. So first things first, PPE, which stands for? <laughs> Personal Protective Equipment. <laughs> It's really important because obviously isopropyl is, is not really a, a very safe chemical. Don't inhale it deeply. Um, but yeah, you, you know, look after yourself. <laughs> you just like making me sound. <laughs> right, okay, so um, yeah, let's start. So. We want to make right. like this one, so I guess we want to start with some on this palette. You can see we use this dark brown a lot, so we're going to use that one. So I'll give that to you, Karen. Thank you. And we've got our little mirror. Let's do it here. I don't want to do it there. I want and to, do it, to yeah. do it here. So we might mix in a little bit of black because the, the great thing about this stuff is um, because it's uh, chalk, it doesn't actually dissolve in the isopropyl, it actually just sort of sits on the surface, which is, is great because it means if you mix colours, you sort of see them beneath the surface, which is really nice. You get like this, this texture. So I'm going to just pour a little bit of this. Okay, I'm doing that. I hope you don't make a mess. Whee! It didn't spill at all. I'm just scraping, you're not telling me when to stop. Oh, We're well, just doing I, the one. Yeah, we'll just do the one for now. Okay. We'll, we can make some more if we need it. Usually I do these in batches, so... 
Yeah. It's always easier to work in batches rather than making just one. Like do all weathering, all painting, all casting. It's all easy. So while Karen's doing that up as well, there's one other product that we use as just sort of a final coat, and this is called Dirty Down. That stuff's amazing. It is awesome. So what this does is you what this does is great English. <laughs> so what this does, it's uh, it's water based, um, so you can spray it on a surface, and if you don't like it, uh, you can kind of just like wipe it off with water and start again. Um, and that's also the great thing about this chalk weather, and if you don't like the results like chalk just washes off so just put it under the sink and, and wash it off and it's clean and you can start again so all of these are really non-destructive sort of weathering techniques word of advice if you ever do use that stuff hold it at a distance it comes out thick and fast it smells yeah it's danger extremely flammable aerosol so yeah they, they actually use this on film sets for dirtying down clothes so if you've got people with like really bright clothes and they're, they're you know too much on the camera, you, they might sometimes give them a little bit of a spritz down. I would demonstrate, but I'm wearing black, so. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's really good. They actually, I've seen it sprayed on people's faces on sets, which is hilarious. But you can see some of the, I'll put it up to the camera. We've got some on the can from just general spray use. So we sometimes use this as just like a final blast, just to get some of the little specks of dirt back, because it's, it's really nice to have. Um, yeah. So how are we doing that? We've got we've black, got two we've shades got browns. Of black. Yes, I've got two shades of black. That's fine. I um, think we want a little bit of purple in there. Just a little bit of... I'm just gonna... I should... Uh, can you do it like this? Is it... <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Yeah, just as you right get it all over the table. Yeah, well, you know, this is got a nice slag of meat. Okay, so the first step is we're gonna take our uh, piece. Let's get these out of the way. Making the Okay, so we've got our piece here, um, and what we kind of want to do is uh, we want to start by mixing in our palette. So I guess we can start over here. So we've got our little palette of, of chalks with little colours that we want. We've got some browns, we've got blacks, uh, or, or dark greys, and a little a little salt bay dash of purple. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just dip in the the brush into the isopropyl. And all I'm going to do is, because I know I mainly want it to be black and brown, I can just sort of start in the middle and just start mixing those together. And really, you can sort of look at the powder and see, like, I can't really tilt it up too much because it will just all fall off. But yeah, it's sort of mixing into that browny, earthy, dark colour that we want. Um, so I'll give that over to you. Oh, okay. Am I doing this now? Yeah, you can do this. All right. So you can either dab it on with sponges or brush it on. So where we want it like really thick, like in these, keep it up, let me keep it up oh, camera. So in, in, in these grooves is where we're really gonna, we're really gonna sort of mash it in because we want those areas to be really dark. So you really stipple it in with the brushes. And you know, it looks, it's quite extreme because it's, it's really dark, but that's fine. It's, the reason I think we like the isopropyl as well is it evaporates, so it dries really quickly. Um, and normally we're not in a rush, but time is precious. Mm -hmm. So you can you can see with just blowing it, it dries really, really quickly. So normally 20, 30 seconds is like the most. So we put that down while we do the next bit. So we've also got here, um, so these are actually uh, these parts are Cassie Nando's um, transponder, so these are the parts that sort of sit so on this part of his jacket. Um, so we recreated that and printed it. This is one of the parts we're using today. We've also got his uh, rank badge. We've got a Millennium Falcon net lever that we're gonna we're gonna dirty up. Um, and also we've got some reject Thor um, clasps. So now we'll take our little bit of sponge. The reason we're wearing the gloves is because obviously the sponge is gonna soak up the isopropyl. Uh, and also it sort of disintegrates it a little bit, so it gets like really weak after you've been using it. Thanks. Which is fine, because you can just tear off a new piece, sponge is fairly cheap. Um, but yeah, so uh, Karen's going to go ahead and take off that first pass. 
Sorry. So all she's doing here is she's just dabbing uh, over the top, heavier in the centre because we obviously want it to be uh, thinner in the middle and thicker on the outsides. So I've got a dry sponge here with no isopropyl on at all and what we can do is we can just sort of run it to these edges and just helps pick out some of the bright edges. That's pretty much it for that first pass. I think that's pretty decent. We'll do some close-ups with the GoPro. So yeah, uh, we'll do a before and after. So obviously this is unpolished raw aluminium cold cast. And this is uh, polished and weathered. So already it looks a ton better. Obviously we, we're not gonna be showing the brass studs on here um, because that's just not We'll do a video on how to do brush studs after As Karen destroys my paint master. But that's what it would look like once yeah. it's on, so you can see then. Yeah. Okay, so the next stage we're going to take on this is, um, we'd probably just leave this to sit for a while while we watch TV. Or do the others. Or do the others. Um, and then after that we would either seal it up if we were done with it, or we would, if we wanted it to be matte, we'd use um, this tester's uh, dull coat. It's really good at making a nice dull finish um, on things. And the great thing is for dirt, that's really great because it, it, dirt isn't typically shiny and glossy. So it's really great for that. So we normally blast them with dull coat. They normally take about an hour to dry. It goes on, it looks really glossy because it's obviously it's liquid, which is fine. Um, and then after that, you can come back with steel wool um, and rub it down again to get the high spots bright because it will dull your, your metal finish as well. Mm -hmm. So you can bring those back again with this. So that's really great as well. Okay, so I mean, I think that's pretty much it for the Cassian Andor one. Um, the, we'll have a look at now how we do some of the, the Thor ones. Can get this next bit here so you can see it's all nice and dry now and we can just take a big uh, a big sponge and we can just actually start dabbing in the middle and scrubbing just to get some of that, that off we can start scrubbing the edges so we can already start to take that off um, and what we can do is we can get a little bit of isopropyl because we what we want is we want a nice we want a nice gradient so we want that to fade out from the center and the way I normally do that is just by, actually, let me take this. I've got a nut on the back and it's getting in my way. Um, yeah, so we can just blend it out. And what it does is it gets rid of the, the brush marks because we don't really want any brush marks in our finished piece. So we can just blend it out like so. So that's So already we're starting to take a lot more shape of what we want. What we can do is now we can make a mess on the table. So you can still see some of the brush marks around that. So we're going to give it another pass, but we're going to let it dry um, a little bit first and then I'll... A few moments later. Uh, after this, we would pretty much just spray it and set it up. It's okay, we're done. Um, you would spray it and just set it up and leave it and then you'd be good. And it would be scrub proof at that point. You'd be you'd be fine. You could, you could also dull coat it similar to how we would with the others and then uh, scrub off to reveal the, 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 the brass powder in this one. And that would be pretty much it. So we're also gonna have a little look at this one. So this is just a Millennium Falcon control lever. And as you can see, it looks really clean and really nice, but nothing on the Falcon is clean. So we used a lot of mixture between like dirty downs and chalk powders and all sorts of stuff. So I'm gonna steal a little bit of this. We're just gonna do a little bit on the top. There's loads of different tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use to finish your props, whether they're for Comic-Con or something you're making for a home project. You can try anything out. Obviously, 
Uh, we'll put some links to below to some of the stuff that we buy. Um, and feel free to ask us any questions. So I'm Luke. And I'm Karen. And we're Make Daily. Again. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs>